Cool, let's go ahead. I just share my screen. And yeah, this session is about behavior-based login. So what does that mean? Um, so imagine you're in the home office. You may be also in the office. Maybe you're traveling after Corona, who knows? And you want to make sure that you have the right people accessing the right resources um, with the right security measures, of course. So the first thing is I will show you a normal login. So I'm a normal user. I'm maybe in the office and I want to just uh, do my login here. So I'm John Doe, I'm entering my password. Basically, I'm getting logged in into or into Okta. And that's the Okta dashboard. There are only a few apps in here, so it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, you've seen there's no multi-factor. It's just using a password out of Active Directory and that's it. Okay, I will just go ahead and sign out again. Um, now to the first use case. Um, for showing you that, I just opened my Tor browser. So Tor, maybe you know that on your network, if you want to do something uh, weird than the internet, you maybe use that. And I will go ahead and also um, go ahead and um, enter my, my same URL. Let me just copy that from the other window. So that's easier for me. So you see I'm exactly using the same stuff. And of course, it's a little bit slow because it's the Tor network. And uh, if you see now, if I try to log in, I'm using the same username, I'm using the same password. And now I'm not able to sign in because I set up a rule in Okta to say, yep, if you're coming from an Onion Tor network browser or Onion Tor network, you're not allowed to, to sign in. Um, we can quickly show a look at this, how it was configured. So let me bring that up. Um, this is the admin interface. And basically what I've done, um, I did create a network zone to say, hey, that's a Tor network zone. I can just um, click on that and say, hey, that's an automatic zone. It's also called a uh, dynamic zone. So you don't have to enter some manual IP address ranges, something we do that for you. Basically you choose Tor Anonymizer proxy and that's it, you save it, done. And the next thing is, of course, um, maybe you want to apply to all of your user base. Maybe you have some special users you want to apply through that. So maybe just the VIP users. In my case, I said, yeah, it's the default policy. So no one is able to log in via Tor. So you can see the first rule in here, it's active. And if I open it up, you will see, I give it a name, Tor, and the user IP is in zone Tor. And it doesn't matter where he's authenticating from radios or from the browser or whatever. And we have no behavior and no risk or no nothing assigned to them. And then the access is denied. It's exactly what you've seen. So that's the important thing. Then we have a few more rules in here. So for example, risk is high or we are entering the Okta service from a new device, for example. Um, new device, we can easily try that out. So let's just go back to my uh, to my demo environment. And basically that was my computer, it was a Windows machine. When I now just open an incognito window, for example, and I'm using just the same login domain as before. Let me quickly bring that up. And of course, now we are accessing from another device. So that's for sure. And let's see how that looks now. So the same password as before. Now, currently, I'm getting prompted for entering a multi-factor. So that's interesting because we didn't see that before. So I could log in because it was a known device. I could not log in because I was coming from the Tor browser. Now I'm coming from a new device and I have to verify myself saying, okay, let's bring up uh, my reflector here so I can show you my, uh, my iPhone and I will click on send push. And you can immediately see I received a notification on my iPhone and it's asking me unrecognized device, Mac OS. And I say, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's me. So I click on, yes, it's me. And then you even see, okay, now it's um, asking me for another factor. So to even make sure that I have the device on my hand, it's not something it was fiddled around with. So 42 it's saying, I click on 42 and basically that's it. And Okta is now forwarding me to the sign on. And that's pretty neat. So because you I was secure to, um, to let, let your users log in to the service and to any apps which have been configured to, um, to use Okta as identity provider. Now I think you're wondering, okay, uh, looks nice. How do you configure that? Is it, is it easy? Is this, is this hard to configure? It's probably very easy. So let me bring up the right um, window again. Um, what I did here, we are again in the same 
default policy because I want to have it for all of my users. And I said risk high or new device. Let's take new device because that was the rule who triggered. And basically what I do, uh, user's IP is anywhere. He authenticating via anything, but behavior is a new device. I don't care about risk or, or something else. I only care about the new device. And I say, then the access is allowed, of course, you've seen that, but I'm prompting for a factor. It is not necessary here to configure any factors because I've done that before. So I said, hey, um, which multi-factors are allowed by which groups? So I basically click in here, that's a multi-factor uh, group. And I said, hey, you can use Okta Verify, Google Authenticator or FIDO2, that's fingerprint or a YubiKey. So that's the um, multi-factor configuration, very easy. But now you will wonder, I think, yeah, behavior, what else can you can you can you uh, put in there to evaluate against? So we were talking about a new device. So that was pretty clear. And what we do, we will always use the past 20 authentications. So that's the, the thing where we evaluate against. Now you can also say, okay, when the person is moving to a new city, new country, uh, maybe a new geolocation, and you can see, I can always click on edit and just configure it by myself. I also can add different behaviors. So it doesn't matter if you're not liking uh, what's pre-configured here, you always can change the stuff. And what's also pretty neat, I think, it's some kind of impossible travel. So that means with an airplane, you cannot travel faster than maybe, maybe 800 kilometers an hour if you're not talking about the Concorde. Um, so we are also evaluating about that. So maybe you was in Munich and now you are in New York City and that's only one hour later it can't be, can't happen. So for sure. And what will you do? Even we can say, yeah, we lock your, uh, your account. We say, yeah, just give us another factor as you've seen before. And that's basically um, what you, what you can configure with behavior analysis. And what we also integrate, we have some partners like Proofpoint, maybe, you know, Proofpoint um, with email security and that stuff. And Proofpoint can also trigger Okta policies. So how could that happen then? Basically, I can create a group with uh, very attack persons, for example. And if Proofpoint is considering someone as a very attack person, so he's receiving a lot of spam or phishing emails or whatever is happening, Proofpoint is automatically moving the person to the very attack persons group. And this group is then automatically, or you configure that beforehand, um, with um, is configured to use multiple factors, for example, or they have to even use restricted um, password complexities, or the password age um, has to be bumped up, or he's even locked out after three successful attempts. And when you look at the normal legacy policy, you're just locked out after five attempts or 10 uh, unsuccessful attempts. So that's really considering if you're a tech person or not. And that's very easy to combine it with other uh, security vendors out there because we have a lot of uh, partners which can, can provide you um, with additional um, security factors, of course. And the same is, of course, true also with, uh, with the sign-on policies. Of course, when you are in the direct tech persons group, then you are allowed to access, but you always have to provide a multi-factor. And maybe after a few days, two hours, whatever, you're not receiving any, any uh, phishing emails anymore, then you will get removed out of the very attacked persons group and basically have the normal sign-in procedure. Now we were talking a lot about, yeah, just general access to Okta. You can also say, okay, I want to access specific applications. Like for example, we take a Sanai here. Um, you can of course configure specific um, applications with um, sign-on rules. So I could just go down here to sign-on policies and say, okay, the following groups and users I want to consider, for example, the very attacked uh, persons group, here we are. And um, then again, if the Veritech persons group are in a zone, for example, um, again, we could use the Tor group, for example, or the Tor zone again, then they're not able to sign into the application, but only to this application. All the other applications are still fine. So you see, we have a lot of flexibility. Who is able to access what applications under which security measures? So that's really about um, how we think about behavior and security. Yeah. I think that's already 10 minutes. It's going pretty fast. Um, looking forward, if you have any questions or maybe a use case or something, um, just put it in the chat or unmute yourself and we can gladly talk about that. Yeah. Anyways, so that was already the session. It was meant to be very sharp and precise, 10 minutes. And uh, 
if you have more questions, as I said, write us an email, talk, contact us, um, and we'll gladly help you out. Um, and I hope it was kind of useful for you. Oh, there's one question. So does Okta support proprietary PKI? So that is, of course, dependent on what you mean about proprietary. Um, we basically supporting X509 certificates, um, what you can use. So we really need the certificate chain to, to import to Okta and also check about the um, revoked certificates uh, once in a while. Um, so yes, you could also log in via uh, via PKI, um, but it depends what it is. So maybe we can have a chat later on and discuss a little bit deeper. But in general, yes, you can just enable login via a personal identifier, personal identifier card, for example, and then you are getting logged in. And you could, of course, then also say, yeah, just bump me for another factor. You have the card, you have the pin of the certificate on the card and the another factor. So that would be also work out. That's, that's not a problem. And I think I was going a little bit quick about the, um, the factors what we're supporting. So let me just reshare my screen um, just to give you a, one more glance at the multi-factors which we are supporting. Um, of course, you've seen the, the app on my phone, so that's very nice, of course, when you receive a push notification. But what's even, I think, more secure these days is FIDO2. So you have a Windows uh, laptop with Windows Hello on it. Great, so you can use that. You have a MacBook with such a DSi have. Awesome. You can also use YubiKeys, Google Titan keys. So everything but is really, really secure and for the user, very easy to use. Just plug it in, you touch it, and you're in. And of course, we're also thinking about on-prem customers. Maybe you have RSA secure uh, ID still um, on, on your lo global, uh, local network. You can, of course, connect that to Okta with some other on-prem MFA connectors, what we can use. And of course, something like if you want to have uh, um, build your own um, one-time password generator app, you can also put that into Okta and say, yeah, my user's already using it. And you just import all the stuff into, into Okta. We can just use your existing infrastructure. So that's, of course, also very neat. Yeah, just wanted to give you a quick, quick heads up on, on that. Yeah. So anyways, if you, um, I think uh, someone just joined recently, um, no worries. Uh, we have the session recorded, so I can just send it over to you. Um, you can just also write me a quick chat email or whatever you want, uh, basically, and I just send it over to you. But yeah, thanks everyone for joining. I hope you enjoyed the, the whole event a little bit. Um, it was not uh, in real life, of, of course, but, uh, but online. And uh, I wish you a great day and uh, stay safe. Thank you.